What's going on? Q&A time, all right? First question. I'm probably gonna do about fucking four questions in this one, and then four questions in the next one, because they're long fucking questions, all right? I can't be fucked talking for that long. Here we go. How do you control the way you perceive things day to day? One day I can look at a situation with a logical and positive response, but the next day I could be sluggish and irritable, question marks. Shout out to the cunt who asked this question. I forgot your name, but good fucking question, okay? Now, how do I know the situation with a positive response? Okay, so he, this guy, you know, one day he's feeling good, the next day he's all sluggish and irritable, just like a fucking yo-yo of emotions. Okay, the only way you get better at dealing with this type of shit is practice. It's practice and it's conscious effort. You have to be conscious and practice, okay? So it's practice, practice, practice. You have to practice how to deal with certain emotions within the present moment when you're dealing with a certain situation, okay? You have to practice how to deal with your emotions in a certain situation at that present moment, okay? So you need to practice it. Every time you have that emotion, practice you need to just you just you just need to practice your response. He says positive response, but the next day I could be sluggish and irritable. You need and there's nothing wrong with being sluggish and irritable, but you just have to realize that there's a reason why you're sluggish and irritable. You shouldn't be slug. There shouldn't be that many situations that you should be sluggish and irritable about. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe your initial response can be sluggish and irritable, but then eventually you'll get over that. You'll get over that. You you get over them feelings and you have a new response to it. But really, it's just practice, okay? You have to practice dealing with a certain situation in that present moment. And what more can I say, bro? What more can I say? Like, for example, you get a flat tire. The more times I get a flat tire, the more I, opportunities I get to practice at fixing my flat tire and then dealing with the emotions that come with getting a flat tire, like emotions of frustration, emotions of anxiety, like, oh my God, I'm anxious, I'm gonna be late for get home. You know, that like that type of shit, you know, that type, you deal with them emotions, okay, by practicing them, by practicing putting on the tire, by practicing being calm, by practicing being positive. Even if you don't feel like being positive, just keep talking positive talk. Just, the moment you become negative is the moment you start getting fucked up with everything, with fucking everything. I'm not saying don't be fucking negative, I'm just saying that if you just go through that whole situation every time it happens, if every time you feel anxious, you start thinking negative thoughts and nothing positive, you're never gonna fucking get over that. You're never gonna be able to deal with that emotion. You just have to, you have to jam the positivity in there, even when times you don't believe that, believe that it's there. Just jam it. Just force feed yourself some fucking positive self-talk bullshit until eventually pff, you get anxious, you deal with it. You get a fight tired, you deal with it. You're tired one day, you deal with it. You don't sleep one day, you deal with it. Just same shit, all right? Next question. What made you go full vegan? Most people go vegetarian to vegan. Seem like you did it in one go. Do you see? Do you see yourself being vegan for the rest of your life? Do you crave non-vegan foods? Good fucking question. All right. Why did I become full vegan? To be honest with you, I don't fucking know why I became full vegan. That's the honest truth. I'd love. To, actually, I know why. I, I'm slowly learning why I became full. Why I went vegan. Do you know what I mean? But the time I went vegan. I was just like, I don't know why I went vegan, dude, to be honest with you, I just went vegan. Do you know, it wasn't for the animals, it wasn't for the planet, I just went vegan. That's the honest fucking truth. Now everyone's gonna be like, I'm vegan, you fucking Muslim, fucking non-pig eating halal motherfucker. But I don't care, okay? I feel like, as the more I do it, the more I go vegan, or am vegan, but the more I, the longer time I do it, the more I start to realize and see, see through all the bullshit, okay? Now, what I'm thinking about now is, you know, I don't like being a part of the this, this system. I know it sounds gay as fuck, but I don't like being a part of the system that society has created or the powers to be have created and imposed on us as human beings on this planet. I don't like the whole, I don't like it. I don't like, I never liked going to school to be taught shit that don't, doesn't fucking matter. I never liked having expectations on me that I didn't want to fucking fulfill. I didn't want the expectation of society on me to go to uni and study a degree, or my expectation of my mum to go study a degree, to go to uni, to earn a certain fucking salary, to buy shit that I didn't really fucking need to make me happy. Do you know what I mean? I remember one dude said, my mum uh, always said, the truth will set you free. And it's so fucking true, because I, see, I finally see the truth. I finally see the truth in everything, with consuming, with consuming food, with training, with everything. I don't need to take protein powder to be jacked. I can just eat food. I don't need to go to I don't need to go to uni to earn a certain amount of money 
to buy useless shit I don't need. I don't need to do that. I don't need to eat fucking meat to get fucking more protein to kill more fucking animals because the government told me that I need to eat more protein and I can only do that through fucking eating fucking red meat. Fucking versus... And I have to kill animals to do that shit. I don't need to do that. It's just part of a bigger fucking scheme that isn't to your benefit. So the moment you see the truth and you wake up from that, you go, what? Why? If I don't need to kill a fucking another animal, why do, why do it? What do I get out of it? What do I get out of it? But everyone's just being brainwashed. Like, you need meat, 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 chicken, you need this, you need that, you need that. So cancer just a part of the system, a part of the meat eating system, a part of the education system, a part of the fucking, a part of the, the systems of everything of society. Do you know what I mean? A part of the clothing, a part of the consumerism, a part of buying this Gucci fucking watch, a part of buying the new fucking iPhone 6 fucking plus, a part, a part of buying the new Aston Martin, a part of fucking, you know, fucking Mr. GQ status, all this type of bullshit. A part of that. I don't want to be a part of that no more, dude. I don't want to be a part of that no more. Can you imagine what, 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 what would happen to the world if people realized that? That you don't need all this shit to be happy? Fuck, man. Where, where, where's, all these, where this, where's the government going to get their money from, man? Do you know what I mean? When, when it, it's, it's a bunch of cunts riding around bikes, lifting weights in fucking homemade gyms, fucking eating fruit off trees, not killing animals and shit. There, there'd be no fucking, there'd be, there'd be no economy, dude. There'd be, no, there'd be no money for the fucking government. It, there would be no system. The system would break down and then we'd all be like, it, it'd just be fucked. So that's why I start, I know it's a, a bit of a long response, but now the more I go vegan, the more I realize that, that it's just like a lot of vegans I hang out with, they just realize the bigger truth of the world. The big, you know, they really see what's going on with the world and shit. Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit of a wake up call, man. But do you crave non-vegan foods? The only time I really crave non-vegan foods is when I'm not eating enough food. So if I'm not eating enough carbs, I start craving a hell of fatty shit, you know. But I don't even know what I crave. I just crave more fucking carbs. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really crave meat and shit. Sometimes I'm not going to lie, I've seen meat and be like, that kind of looks tasty. But it's like, how can you not, you know, think that? Like, you've been fucking eating meat shit your whole fucking life. You can't expect to not look like, just look at meat like two months after going vegan and be like, fuck, that fucking looks tasty. That looks disgusting and shit. Fuck that. You know what I mean? The things that haven't... The things that have had an influence on your mindset, biggest lessons learned in life type of thing. Okay. I've made lots of videos about this, you know, like no one really gives a fuck about you the biggest lesson I've really learned, you know. What can I say? The biggest things that had an influence on my mindset, um, I don't know, man. No one gives a fuck about you is a good one, you know, that not many people really give a fuck about you. That was a big one for me, you know what I mean? When I was growing up, my dad left me, my mum and my sister when we were young and it was kind of like... I'm not trying to cry wolf like a baby. I know plenty of people whose dads are dead. I still have a dad. But I'm saying that whole that whole thing of just like, if your dad can fucking move countries away from you and leave you and your mum and your sister and he's meant to really care about you, then what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? So that was a big lesson for me growing up. Um, also, another big fucking thing that had an influence on my mindset was I think back in, I forgot what year it was, 2013, 2012, 2013, a bit of 2014, I had insomnia, you know, I still sleep like shit, but I had pretty severe insomnia for a couple of years, and it just wrecked my life to fucking shreds, it just shredded the fuck out of my life, and I really had to build from the ground up, and that was also one that no one gives a fuck about you really stepped in, because... At the time, I thought when you deal with all this stuff, everyone's just going to have a hand out there to pick you up and fucking, you know, pick you up and make you feel good. But you learn that no one's really there for you. No one really, like, no one, you can't, no one can pick you up if you can't pick yourself up. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you can't pick yourself up, no one's going to be able there to pick you up. You know what I mean? There was superficial shit where people act like they help you. But when it really comes down, you know, I used to be sitting there at night, like, sitting there thinking, like, who the fuck can I call now? Like, there's no one I can really call now, you know? It's 3 a.m. in the morning, I haven't slept for fucking months. And I'm just like, who do I fucking call? I can't call my dad. You know, my mum's sleeping. My sister's in a different country. What am I gonna do? Can I call this friend? Well, he's not really my friend. Like, so he, he doesn't wanna hear that. She doesn't wanna hear that. So you learn to be self proficient in, you know, you, you know, you get to delve deep into your own self and fucking, you know, realize what's going on. But that really had a big influence on my mindset, man. Do you know what I mean? That was tough to overcome. That was probably the toughest thing to overcome. And that really propelled me forward in a lot of fucking shit. Do you know what I mean? So now I'm like pretty sharp mentally with a lot of things. Like just because those times really just, I'm so happy for them. They really fucking 
crisped, 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 I don't even know. They really sharpened my mental edge. And I got a fucking mental edge that a lot of other cunts start have. Because when I couldn't sleep and stuff, anyone who hasn't slept for a long time will know this, that really, it breeds you down mentally. It's like being in a fucking, it's like being tortured. Eventually, all you want to do is die. Do you know what I mean? So it gets to that point where all you want to do is kill yourself, okay? And then you're hanging on by a fucking thread where the only thing you think about is, am I going to kill myself today or am I not going to kill myself today? And you just float between negative thoughts all day, all day, all day. So... Getting over that was like the biggest fucking thing I've ever done in my whole life. Probably the biggest fucking achievement. And I'm not trying to sit here and say, I'm not going to fucking do depression. I'm not promoting, promoting suicide or depression or any of this shit. I'm just promoting the fact that all of that is a choice. I chose to think those thoughts when I was depressed. Well, I, I didn't ever call myself depressed. I just was, I knew I was tired. But, you know, clinically people would have said I was depressed. But I chose to think them thoughts. And I also chose my way out of it. I also thought my way out of it. I also worked my way out of it. I remember I always used to think that happiness was just something that you were fucking born with. You know what I mean? But when I had, had that sleeping issue, I realized that you had to earn your fucking happiness. You can't just be happy. You really have to earn your happiness. And t in today's society, with everything that's fucking, you know, the system and everything that's, you know, put expectation-wise on people, it's very hard, it's very hard to get happy when society tells you that happiness comes in form forms of material fucking items and, and, and certain circumstances. So when a circumstance, when you earn a certain amount of money or when you, earn, when you have a fucking material item such as certain clothing or, you know, social status and stuff, it's very hard to get that internal happiness. So it's like, it's like a big circle, you know, the thing, the vegan thing, being happy internally and shit, you have to earn it. And it's hard and it takes a lot of time. But if you realize that you have to earn your happiness, you're not gonna be sitting there feeling like a fucking victim when you're sad because you're gonna, there's a reason you're sad. If you're sad, you generally deserve to be sad because you haven't earned your happiness. I know it sounds harsh, but ha sadness is weakness. It's fucking weakness. So in the gym, like if you can't deadlift 285 kilos, 290 kilos, whatever, you haven't earned the strength to deadlift it. You shouldn't be fucking upset that you haven't been able to do it. You should just say, fuck, like I'm not there yet. I haven't, I haven't earned it. So it's the same thing with happiness and sadness. I know this is a bit off topic, but you have to earn that fucking happiness through work, through consistent practice of dealing with certain situations, like that first question, with like dealing with them certain situations and emotions at that present moment by living in that present moment. That's how you fucking become happy and that's how you develop that fucking killer instinct mindset to where nothing really rocks you. And still shit will rock me like... I still have, you know, um, to be completely honest, I still have those fucking moments where I think like, oh my God, you know, two years ago I wanted to kill myself and imagine if I felt like that today and I kind of feel a bit anxious today. My heart's kind of, my chest is kind of tight and I don't know, but it's really easy for me now just to fuck that off. Do you know what I mean? It's taken me two, three years to be able to fuck those thoughts off straight away, but I can do it. And... And, you know, there's lots of ways you can learn how to do it. I talked about, you know, have sport being a big, sport being one of the biggest, e or training being the easiest one to be able to control your thoughts and emotions, to, you know, be able to just shut off negative thoughts and just be able to push on and carry on and, you know, shit like that. But I know that was a bit of a fucking, um, the big bit of a side rant. But, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. That's, that's one of the biggest, that's probably the biggest things that had an influence on mindset. The family thing, and then the sleep and, and, and sadness thing. But that's it, man. Three questions. It's already been 14 minutes. I think I'm going to leave it at three questions today. Tomorrow I'll answer another three questions. And I'll just keep doing that every day. I want to get this video over and, done, over and done with by 15 minutes. So thumbs up, like, share if you like the video. I hope I answered those questions kind of good. So the, the perception one, the vegan one and the life lessons one. All right, if you like the video, comment, like, subscribe, share. Follow me on Instagram, at Abdullah Zainab. Post down below what you wanna see, comments, criticisms, whatever. I'll see you tomorrow.